81 to 84. Okay. Those are, yeah, the, the glory you, years, as they call You claim it. to be a quarterback at Harvard, <laughs> 81 to 84. That's right. Yeah. Okay, I'm looking at, these are the Harvard Crimson career passing leaders yeah. since 1970. Yeah. Uh, you're not on the list. Yeah. <laughs> not, not only are you not on the list, but Matt Simpson, who's number 11, uh, had a total of nine yards <laughs> passing. That's right. He was a little before my time. <laughs> okay, but shouldn't you, you know, did you throw less than nine yards in well, total yardage? Or? I, I threw a lot, but unfortunately my career ended early my junior year. Oh, it there. did? Yeah, with a career-ending injury. It did? It's a physical sport, yeah. Okay. <laughs> what, they tackle you? Big deal. Yeah, well, yeah, they, they played mean, Michael, in Dartmouth, yeah, yeah. Up, in, up in New Hampshire. You got beat... They, you got tackled by Dartmouth, and you, did, and you didn't get up again? I'm not proud of this aspect of my career, but yeah. uh, it, you had to see the defensive lineman. He was scary, and uh, yeah. he did a number well, on my left Dartmouth, shoulder. They get very scary guys at Dartmouth. That's right. <laughs> so you're My problem, though, is yeah. uh, I was colorblind, so I tended to throw to the other team. So I hope that's not on your record sheet, too. <laughs> well, can I, I'll fill it in here. What was your total yardage? you happen to know offhand? <laughs> Passing yardage? Well, I, when I was playing, freshmen weren't allowed to play on the varsity, so I was okay. starting quarterback on the freshman team. And then, okay. So we lit it up, and we were undefeated. We beat okay. Yale, which is the uh, game, as you, as you know. Yeah, okay. And then, uh, unfortunately, yeah. as I was playing, moving up the ranks. That's so you have no record as well, a quarterback. Well, not only had no record, but Doug Flutie was playing at Boston College at the time, too. <laughs> so, guess, so guess who got all the, yeah. all the headlines? Okay. But you ran for some yards, didn't you? Yeah, we were running all the time. Yeah. Usually backwards for backwards, my life. Yeah, okay, yeah. all right. We'll let that go then. Right. So here's, here, there's, here's this. Percentage of American public who say random choices from the phone book would be better than current congressmen. Okay. All right. Care to guess what that percentage is? Uh, I would imagine it's uh, pretty high. Yeah. For, uh, for, it's 43%. Surprisingly low, actually, I think. Okay. <laughs> so... You'd like to see it much higher. But, but yet, you know, uh, like 12% of Americans think Congress is doing a good job, something like that. Yeah. But like we're, almost, we're underperforming. Almost half like their own congressmen. Yeah, that's a, uh, a strange anomaly, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Not you necessarily, but I'm yeah. saying, you know. That, well, that's true. <laughs> Well, I hope I'm not revealing any traits. Explain but, that. But yeah. for all the listeners, I had no idea that all you had to do, Michael, is raise your hands and you get instantaneous applause from the audience. Yeah. Like, it's a lot like politics. So, so that's how you do it. It's a lot like politics. <laughs> <laughs> Except if you're a congressman, nobody reacts. That's right. <laughs> well, they did actually for you there. I mean, what do you think about that? The feelings about Congress? And Listen, there's no question that Congress has been underperforming. I think the American yeah. people deserve a better uh, performance yeah. coming out of Washington, and yeah. we're working hard to try to, try yeah. to change that. No, I mean, um, I mean, what do you think about the random choices from the phone book idea? <laughs> Why not? You know, hey, listen, John Dingle yesterday just set a record for most years serving in the house. Yeah. He probably gave me the second best piece of advice when I got there. He said, yeah, Ron, and he took me under his wing. He said, Ron, never forget, you've got an important job, but you're not an important person. And the oh. second you start thinking you're an important person, yeah. that's when you don't think the rules apply to you and you cut corners, and that's when people get into trouble around here. And I've kind of yeah. taken that to heart. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. We're all replaceable, Michael. We're, we're all replaceable. Uh -huh. Maybe you are, Ron. I don't know. Who's going to replace Mike Feldman? That's right. Uh, who would want to? That's, that's, that's the other yeah. part of it. Uh, some of the big questions. How do you feel about the, uh, the hike in number of livestock? The height and number of The livestock. hike. Yeah. You know, you need the permit for how many livestock you can keep. Right. I'm sure you're aware of this. You're that's big right. on farms yeah. and stuff. Exactly. So uh, animal units. How many animal units do you favor? Well, I've always been supportive of family farms, but one, one of the yeah. troubling aspects back home is that local, local decision makers are taken out of the equation now when it comes to these large animal uh, feed operations. I think that's going to that's going to cause problems. Give me but, a number. Give me a number, Ron. Well, <laughs> of how many livestock I like? Yeah. Well, uh, they have, right now you can uh, you, have, you can have 200 animal units. Yeah. yeah. Right. And there's one there's right one now. Right there. Yeah. 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 There. Right. She's got one already. I, I, what's your feeling on that, that's, man? Yeah, she, she wants leave to it cut at 200? Off. Yeah, Sharon wants to cut off oh, at you 200. Oh, you want to limit the animal yeah. units. Right. Is that a personal thing? Do you have a, something against animals? Or are they, near, yeah. are they next door or something? Well, they're kind of smelly. Smelly. That's, 
but they want to raise it to, to 500 animal units. A cow is, a cow is 1.4 units. How do they figure that? Okay, yeah, cow and, is, and, you, and you thought Congress was messed up. I mean, yeah. <laughs> a congressman is 0.7 units. <laughs> A uh, market hog is 0.4 units, and a sheep is 0.1 units. So I, if you fudge this, you, if you, I, I guess I would go with the sheep then. You could have a, pretty many sheep. Yeah, you better the same bang for the buck, units. I guess. Yeah. The sheep, yeah. Okay. No comment on this old unit question? You don't want to well, commit listen, yourself I, to a unit uh, number? You can give me I've a unit? been somewhat critical of our farm policy in this country for some time. I think it's leading to greater consolidation. It's squeezing the, the, the small family farmer, and we've got to change some of the policies coming out of Washington to address that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I agree. Those subsidies, right? Because that's not a lot that's of right, the subsidies. Yeah. Uh, Obamacare? Yes, the Affordable Care Act. Are you or glad Obamacare? it's not called Kind Care? Well, it's, it's kind of funny. I, I had a listening session recently back home, and there was a gentleman who really didn't like the law. And, and he said, I hate this Obamacare. I yeah. hate it. And I said, well, let me ask you, what, what part of Obamacare don't you really like? And he said, well, it's the Obama part of Obamacare. I don't, oh, yeah, yeah. I don't like it. Not the care part. He's in right, favor not of the care, care part. Yeah. 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 Right. Listen, I understand it's complicated, but we've had a health care system that's been de in desperate need of reform for some time. Yeah. I'm not saying this is the perfect, yeah. perfect thing, but we have to try something. You think like something like a Gunderson Lutheran, formerly Lutheran care <laughs> would be yeah, the way to go? They're going through a bit of an identity crisis right now, but listen, I'm very proud of the health care providers we have in this region. Not only yeah. Gunderson, but the mail yeah. system and right. the Marshfields and the Deans and... I think they are showing yeah. models of care that work and, and work very well. If we can take that nationwide, I don't think we'd have the health care crisis uh, that we're facing as a country today. Yeah. Really. Well, should they go nationwide with the Lutheran or without the Lutheran? Well, I, Were you a little shocked to hear uh, that? No I, no, I think. Well, mail system, too. They just switch, switch their name, too. I think they're doing it just to simplify the, the marketing. No, know, they want to get the, you know, the Presbyterians. <laughs> yeah. you, that's, well, that might help, wanna, too. You know, right? and, you know yeah, Jewish people help. want to, you yeah. know. The, but they're terrific people. They're working very hard, and I think they're providing models of care that we need to pay closer attention to. Yeah. Yeah. What, what was your major in at Harvard then? I was, how did you get into Harvard? Yeah, that's a good question. And, and, you know, my, my mom's still wondering that yeah, very question. Yeah. Now, how, did, how did that happen, Ron, in that? Because you went to Logan here, right? I was in, yeah, Logan yeah. Northside. Yeah. 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 My, my two Where, boys now are, are at Logan. Yeah. Sophomore, they just finished up their sophomore freshman year. Are yesterday. they playing as well? They're playing, but they're playing a lot better than I did back then. They, really? they throw, well, had, they throw a hold, much better ball than I did at that age. You hold a, some records there. At yeah, I mean, there's, a, there's a few, yeah. yeah. I think for most concussions, too. And it's, <laughs> that's probably why I got involved in politics. <laughs> <laughs> what were we saying before all this started? I was uh, getting at something here. You said Logan, yeah. you Logan, went to Logan, and yeah. uh, there was, what were we talking about? Yeah. Oh yeah, Harvard. Now, how did that, and uh, how did you get into Harvard then from Logan? Well, I, I did tend to treat school seriously too. So I hit the yeah. books hard, and I'm trying to impress on my boys. Listen, you need career yeah. options. You're not not everyone's going to make it. In yeah, the NFL. but Harvard, yeah. right? Well, it was it, it was a good opportunity. But the, UWM. The, the truth is, I, 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 I had my heart I had my heart set on going to the Air Force Academy, but then they diagnosed me as red green colorblind and oh, they said I, w I, I wouldn't be able to fly. Yeah. Why, well, how would that affect your flying? Uh, they, they wouldn't put me in the cockpit, for starters. Oh. <laughs> they don't want, I guess Good they tell, don't want me shooting on our own troops out in the field. Oh, know? okay. It's one thing throwing interceptions to the wrong team, but <laughs> you don't want to mess that up. <laughs> so you wanted to go to the Air Force Academy, and then Harvard just, was the second choice? Yeah, you might say that. Yeah, you might say yeah. that. Yeah. How, is it, was it hard to get into Harvard? Well, I never it, tried. It, it's, but I hear it's hard. Listen, it was, it was a great opportunity. I came from you know, Western Lacrosse here and went out east and was able to attend Harvard. And uh -huh. uh, what was fun about it, what I really enjoyed about it, was the diverse student body that, that came with them. I mean, there were students from across the world that I was sitting in class with learning from and that. In fact, this week we just have our own uh, China son that's rejoined us, Oscar, who's a freshman in high school, and he's staying with us for a few weeks too. And we need more of that type of exchange, I think, to, to make the world well, a better place. Well, could he stay at our place yeah. afterwards? That's right. Oscar's here. There's, there's Oscar. Hey, Oscar. He's, he's been with us a few school years, and yeah. Could we, we, we can't get rid of a kid now. He, he keeps right. coming, coming back. Could we possibly just pass Oscar around because he could stay with us in Madison? <laughs> Oscar's great. He has better English than I do now. He's, he's yeah. amazing. But he also wanted me to give you this question that he wrote. Oh, he did? So, yeah, why don't you read it to the audience and uh, 
and, and respond to That's Oscar. Very funny. <laughs> oh, it's in Chinese. Yes. You don't you don't read Chinese, Michael? Yeah. Oh, do you? Well, yes, Ron I do. Ben? Let me translate. Yeah, Oscar <laughs> says, Michael, I've had a chance to see your program many times. I love it. I'm I'm interested in yeah, buying. Yeah, now I'm read interested. it. Now read it. <laughs> I had it upside down. Right. He said, I'm interested in buying it. What what would it take? <laughs> Oscar, is that what that says? <laughs> Simple yes or no. That's not what that says. Yeah. Made all <laughs> Very creative. Uh, are you that way in caucus as well? Where are we? We try to rock the boat a little bit. Yeah. Uh, okay. And, uh, and so uh, what committees are you on? I'm, I'm on the Ways and Means Committee. Well, it's, that's a good one, isn't it? It's, uh, yeah, it's a, lot of, a lot of things cross our desk. We're right yeah. in the middle of most of the big debates, like economic policy from yeah. ta tax legislation to trade and the entitlement programs, Medicare, Social Security. Entitlement. You know, they should call them something else. I would agree. You know? Yeah, I would agree. Call yeah, them entitlement, I think it's something a else. Right. Call them, I don't know, what, I can't think of a good word for entitlement that isn't entitlement. You know, that's yeah. the problem. With it. Well, you, but earn, you are, how you know, earned, aren't you entitled earned to Earned retirement security, I mean, that'd be a if good start. If you pay into something, uh, you're, you're entitled to get something back from Exactly. You. But you do. It's, it's, oh, right. It's, yeah, someone said. What? You earned it. You earned it stuff. Right. We'll call it you earned it stuff. Right. Instead of entitlements, it'd yeah. be a lot easier. And, uh, you know, lacrosse is, I mean, lacrosse county, this area, it's the last, it's like a democratic bastion anywhere. I mean, well, you guys I, should form a circle. I, you know, I, that's I, a little unusual. I, 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 tend, I tend to think that there are more pragmatic, reasonable people who don't, don't get caught up in the whole ideological struggles of our days. And that's what makes it fun representing this area. They're, they're very open minded. And I think. Uh, I think they try to drill down on the issues too, and they don't get. What did you up. just say? <laughs> <laughs> I know you go into these things here, and I mean they're very good, but I don't know what they mean. As yeah. a, they're, they're, to, they're a great group of people to represent. Yes, they no, are. That's the but I mean, I'm just sort of curious as to why you know, this is like the last. This is like the Alamo of the Democratic Party in, in Wisconsin, it seems well, like. Well, outside of Madison, Milwaukee, the Fox Valley, yeah. northern Wisconsin, and yeah. you know all those other areas <laughs> too, Mike. Okay, mind. right. All right. <laughs> Okay, point well made. <laughs> but here, I mean, everybody, I mean, every, you go from the ground up. Well, the mayor is progressive, whatever that is. Well, I like your attitude, but I'd like you to talk to my dad, too, at some point. Yeah. He's, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's a little harder to convince on some of the issues. Is, is your dad a Republican? <laughs> yeah, you might say that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know what happened to mom. I How did that had, happen then? I thought you, she had more influence over here. Were you adopted, or what happened? I don't know. It, it, it makes for some lively uh, uh, dinnertime conversations, so let's yeah. put it that way. Yeah. Did your, did your own philosophy develop uh, over time? Because you probably grew up. You, you, mostly we are what our folks are. You know, yeah, did, you have, did you have an that's experience true. with a, a good it's, democratic experience? Well, I came from fairly <laughs> humble beginnings on the north yeah. side. Of the, my dad was actually a telephone repairman for 34 years, you know, shimming up those telephone sure. lines. And when mom wasn't at home raising us boys, she was in the lacrosse school district working in the personnel office. And, mm -hmm. and I had to contend with three uh, rambunctious brothers uh, in the family, too. So. Yeah. And I'm a middle child, so I think... You're in the middle? Yeah. Okay. So I think you got to do a lot of listening, learning to yeah. listen a lot when you're in the middle. But that was, did you go to, uh, you know, like Badger Camp or something, or Badger Nation, what is that called? Yeah, I did, the, yeah, I did Badger uh, Camp, Badger Boys State. Badger Boys State. Right, Cause, exactly. Because, so, you know, Walker did, but he came out with a different counselor, apparently. <laughs> Uh, apparently so. And apparently he, okay. something happened to him at Badger State or something, is what, yeah, is what may, I understand. Maybe, yeah. I, I don't know. But d did you have an experience, a, like a Democratic? Was there, a, was there someone that... that an you, epiphany? Uh, maybe yeah, an epiphany. Well, listen, I... Because you I, worked for Proxmire. I, I did. I, yeah, I cut my political teeth with Bill Proxmire, yeah. someone who I grew up admiring. And, yeah. uh, but I've had some... Fortunately, you know, growing up in Wisconsin, we've had some pretty good role models to, to keep an eye on. Yeah. From Bill Proxmire to Gaylord Nelson, the father yeah. of Earth Day, yeah. uh, which is still celebrated yeah. uh, every year. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I, so I did spend some time with Bill Proxmire out in yeah. Washington, investigated many of his Golden Fleece awards. Golden for, Fleece, yeah. You know, ridiculous uh, Which he later, spending. later had up here, as I recall. That's right. Yes. Put, it on, put it on top of his head. <laughs> uh, well, that's interesting. So, but was that the turning point then? With well, even the then, I, I, yeah, who knows if you have an opportunity to, to yeah. run for public office. So yeah. I eventually came back home, and I was working as a prosecutor, special prosecutor. When, oh, yeah. yeah. When, when we, Tawny and I, shortly yeah. after we got married, decided to run for the congressional seat. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's an important, I discovered in life, to marry up. And I'm fortunate to have done that with, yeah. with my wife, Tawny. I yeah. know. That's... Because there's no yeah. way I could have done it with, you know, without her help. And, yeah. 
That's the mistake I made. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't marry up. Oh, anyway, okay. uh, <laughs> I married horizontal, kind of, you know. <laughs> She's been that way ever since, actually. I don't know. Right. Anyway. <laughs> oh, come on. I'm kidding. <laughs> Let's try this. Hi, honey. <laughs> Hi, honey. Don't get up. That's all right. Okay. Uh, Congress, a, lot of, a lot of Americans probably believe that Congress actually cannot function anymore. That's a dysfunctional, <clears throat> absolutely dysfunctional. And by, by design now, by the, a lot of these people who came in, their design was, is more or less to dismantle government, really. And so you elect someone like that, and su surprise, government is not working. I mean, I mean, is, is, it, is it hopelessly deadlocked as... as well, listen, I, I still hold enduring faith in the, the future of our country, but it is hard. I mean, yeah. you have 535 people from different walks of life, different parts of the country, all thrown together, and you're trying to reach consensus amongst all those different viewpoints. But yeah. what has been troubling recently is this attitude coming to Washington. It's either my way or no way at all. Yeah. And then nothing gets accomplished then. And the essence of any democracy is compromise, and it's the only way a family can survive. I mean... If I came home one night and said, Tony, I've got a great new idea. It's either going to be my way or no way at all in this household anymore. She'd throw me out on my ears. And, yeah. and so I, I think we need to take that same approach to, uh, to Congress yeah. and, and to the debates that we have. Well, if you do, Tony, Mike Feldman. <laughs> <laughs> Rebound. Uh, then you'll have a chance to marry up, Mike. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah really. Way up. Over, over my head. Um, but I mean, do you see this? What? Uh, then she can marry up, she said. Whoa. Oh. Yeah, she's, this is she's, getting good. She's going to the this phone really book now, good. apparently. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you see any of this changing? I mean, do you see any, I, I do. Uh, I do. There are cycles to American history. I think there are cycles to politics, too. And usually when you enter a bad economic time, you get a lot more of this anxiety, a lot more of yeah. this head, head butting, and a lot more finger pointing, and, and a lot being not being accomplished then. Yeah. But I think it's coming back. I think the, the new class that just got elected are more reasonable and pragmatic, and hopefully the pendulum will start swinging back yeah. again. So do you see that? One does not, all the votes in Congress, one does not seem to, how many times they vote against Obamacare? Yeah, it's been hard. I mean, I think we're up to 30, 37 and yeah, counting. 37, right? yeah. Okay. We get it. They don't like it, but yeah. really, 37 times to repeal the, the, the bill of the land, it gets a little redundant. Yeah. yeah. But you see that changing. Well, I think there's a lot of hard work. We have some serious issues that we need to address, and yeah. I found, you know, in the course of my job, it helps if you can just slow down and listen to each other, because there yeah. is a lot of common ground, but when there's too much shouting, there's not yeah. enough listening, and this is what you get from it, and, it, a, lot of, and a lot of disappointment. And um, what, what do you see right now, I mean, in this session of Congress, at this point in history, what is, what is the most pressing need for Congress to get Well, as I know some of my with. colleagues believe it's the deficit and debt and we've got to get our fiscal house in order. You know, they're right, we do. We have a responsibility. But I think the greatest challenge we face is increased global competition. And how we respond to that as a nation is going to define who we are as a country and what type of future our children and grandchildren have. And that's yeah. why we keep inviting Ch uh, Oscar back, so we can find out what the, the Chinese are up to. And <laughs> <laughs> He's great. We well, love that's him. That's your motive, huh? <laughs> that's okay. the motive. That's right. <laughs> And, um, and how does one do that, though, this increased global competition? I mean, everything is offshore now, even Apple and all that well, stuff is uh, offshore. And you know, Michael, China here in Wisconsin, our farmers have a saying, you can't eat the seed corn. You know, it's the seed corn we need to be planting as do a nation. Do they have that saying? I, th I think they do. Have you ever yeah. heard and, of it? And it's hard, been hard to spring that? for them to plant the seed corn because yeah. of all the rain and how muddy the fields are. But, can you can know, I just ask, so, has anyone ever heard a farmer say that, you can't eat the seed corn? You can't eat the, there, we've got a couple, couple farmers okay, in right, the okay, audience. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, can't I, eat the I, seed I corn. I've never heard that. And by that, that, I mean, you know, the crucial public investments we, have to, we also have to be making in quality right. education, job training, research right. programs, broadband expansion, infrastructure investment. That's the seed corn we need to be investing in. And yet that's, those are the programs that get cut right now. And I think it's going to leave us in a less competitive position yeah. if it continues. Yeah, I think you're right. Congressman, nice to have you here. Nice, nice to meet you. Welcome. Thank Congressman, you. the Honorable Ron Kine, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Do this. Do this as you leave. Congressman Ron Kine. Okay. Glad we cleared up that Harvard thing anyway. <laughs> oh. Okay, that's just the rundown there. I don't need to know that. We got the boys in the band here with us today, ladies and gentlemen. They want to perform for you. And I'll
tell you who they are in a minute. We have on the piano here, Mr. John Tuling, our band Hello. leader. And I'll let John introduce his bandmates. Oh, well, I can't remember uh, Dustin's name. Uh, <laughs> on drums, we got a special guest today. He is, he is from lacrosse. Um, yeah, I know that, Jeff. Thank you. <laughs> Dustin Hackworth on Dustin drums. Dustin Hackworth on the drums, joining us today. And of course, every week, we have uh, the great bassist and uh, close town. personal friend of mine, uh, <laughs> Jeff Hammond on bass. And this is a tune, I picked this for you, Michael, because I, I think you like this tune. Okay, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> 